the moment you detach the cell uh, this golgi that is very tightly packed suddenly goes poof inside the cell and fills up the whole cell right so the golgi that is normally very compact is suddenly completely opened up and if you take this cell and now replate it back on matrix it goes and becomes compact again right and i have been as a cell biologist doing experiments like this you know any time you grow cells you detach them before you replate them again and we've been doing this for all these years and every time we do this the golgi does this right so an experiment i mean it was a it was a very um, remarkable thing to see that uh, nobody seems to have asked this question this way and by just taking a dna cells detaching them and replating them we were able to discover something that is very fundamental in terms of how cells uh, behave hey hi welcome to biotech talks today with us we have dr nagraj balasubramanyam an associate professor from isa pune at isa pune dr nagraj balasubramanyam is heading cell adhesion lab and today he is going to explain us the fundamentals of cell adhesion and cancer now during our conversation i learned so many things so many new things about how cell exist and why cancer is such a tedious problem i was fascinated by his talk and i am sure that you will be too hello sir how are you hi i'm good <laughs> i'm good so you had a uh, adhesion lab at iser pune and that makes me ask you that what is adhesion like why it is called as adhesion lab right um so my lab as you rightly said is called the cell adhesion lab um we study cells and we study this process of adhesion that cells do right and um and adhesion if you go look up the terminology <coughs> is um the ability of something to stick to something mm-hmm. right um and so the ability of cells to stick uh, is what we uh, is what we focus on right and um um uh, cells do this by many different ways um and um we are particularly interested in something called the extracellular matrix um and like the movie the matrix uh, that some of you may have seen or heard about uh, the extracellular matrix is everywhere around cells so in physiology in our body um tissues are uh, you know organs are made up of tissues tissues are made up of cells um and the cells are held by this extracellular matrix so cells stick to the extracellular matrix and the really interesting thing about the extracellular matrix is the cells make the extracellular matrix also so unlike the movie matrix this is a matrix that the cells live in that they have themselves created right and um cells coming from different organs in our body make very distinct compositions of matrix and um so understanding how cells adhere or stick to this matrix um is been the focus of my lab we are trying to ask how that affects the behavior of cells so what happens to cells um if they stick to the matrix how cellular processes are con- processes are controlled by it um and we also ask what happens if the cells don't stick right so if you detach a cell from the matrix what all changes and this allows us to understand the relevance of the matrix to you know simple functions in the cell um and also complex interactions that cells have uh, you know with each other uh, to work um, you know as a unit so to speak so that's the kind of small introduction to what cell adhesion is yeah. so i did one uh, interview on bone biochemistry okay. and uh, that is what i am trying to relate like okay. understanding bone biochemistry helps right to do better in medicals right right in healthcare system to right. do uh, uh, fast healing something right. like that right. so like what are the medical applications of this field because it is very basic and understanding right. basic will uh, like right really right. giving some right no abs- ab- absolutely yeah so um so understanding how cells respond to the matrix 
um, at the fundamental level is useful to know what that interaction means, obviously, right? And as I said, the matrix is everywhere, which means whatever the cells are doing in our body is influenced by this environment, mm -hmm. right? So, um, at, at the level of normal physiological functioning of cells in your body, uh, the matrix directly has a role. It is what is telling your liver cells to do what they do and the kidney cells to do what they do. Right? Um, and so knowing how cells talk to that matrix and how it affects their function um, allows you to understand how these cells are similar but different. Right? Because as far as the architecture of cells goes, many of these cells are, you know, have the same components but uh, they may have some receptors that are different uh, that allows them to do things work differently. Uh, a big influencer of this is the matrix. So, so that goes to the core of understanding how uh, different cells do what they do in their natural environment. Uh, that also means that if you understand what happens to normal cells, you also have the um, capability now to understand how this changes in diseases, mm. right? And uh, a very uh, prominent example of how the matrix could affect uh, cellular function in diseases uh, is a disease like cancer that, you know, many of us are, uh, you know, most of us are aware of. Um, and um, cancer cells have this capability that, uh, you know, they make tumors. So normal cells have very controlled growth, but cancer cells don't have controlled growth, they can grow in an uncontrolled manner uh, and make tumors. They also have the capability to go survive in new places. So one of the hallmarks of cancer is cancer metastasis. That cancer goes, uh, that is uh, originated in the, in the kidney or in the lungs, uh, you know, goes to other tissues in your body. And metastasis is also what makes treating cancers that much difficult. But in physiology, in our normal body, if uh, cells which are in the liver uh, are found only in the liver, the cells that are found in the lung are found only in the lung. Uh, so how come cancer cells actually make it to new places uh, and do well there? Right? This ability to grow uncontrollably and to grow and um, migrate to new areas and thrive in new areas, not just reach there, but do well there, make tumors there is made possible by cancer cells acquiring uh, a fundamental change in their regulation. And that change, among other changes, they acquire a lot of changes, this is one among them, uh, is the ability to become anchorage independent. Normal cells which stick to the matrix and where their growth is dependent on this ability to stick uh, are anchorage dependent. So for them, the matrix tells the cell how to grow and regulates how the cell grows. The fact that cancer cells have become anchorage independent means their regulation by the matrix is somehow compromised. So they are not regulated the same way as normal cells are. Which means for a normal liver cell, being in the matrix of the liver is what seems like normal, right? So that cell feels like, you know, this is home. If you are from Pune and, uh, you know, Pune is home for you, you know, the moment you take this person out and, you know, put you in Bombay, at least for the first few days, if not weeks, you're going to feel that this is not Pune, right? And um, so the liver cells similarly feel that they do, they are doing fine as long as they are made in the matrix of the liver. You take these cells and put them in the matrix of the kidney or the lung. The composition of the matrix being different immediately affects the cells. And these cells now stop doing what they would do uh, as a normal liver cell. Right? So this means that a liver cell that makes it to the kidney or the lung doesn't actually like it there. So unlike you moving to Bombay, you know, eventually you will get used to it and maybe actually like Bombay. Uh, these cells don't, right? So they go to a new place and, you know, they struggle there. 
and eventually they will not survive them. Cancer cells, however, because of this anchorage independence that they have acquired, are actually independent of that adhesion. That means they can make it to a completely new city and feel like Bombay feels like Pune. Right? <laughs> so, so they go to a new place and they uh, are perfectly at home there. Right? Uh, you know, they like uh, everything that that matrix is doing for them. And uh, they are able to do this because their regulatory controls are not so much dependent on the signature that the matrix carries. So this becomes a huge regulatory um, you know, control that cancer cells bypass. So because they are able to bypass this, that means if you really want to be able to block cancer cells from growing and going and thriving in a new place, you somehow have to find a way to make them less anchorage independent and make them more anchorage dependent. Right? So our hope also is that uh, in us studying how normal cells do this, right, that we will also understand how diseases bypass this. Right? So, so cancer is one very good example of how um, the matrix can influence this. The matrix does this for many other things. Everything from uh, wound healing right, um, requires cells to move and a lot of that movement happens um, along the matrix that, that is there. Um, you know, diseases uh, that affect uh, blood vessels, for example. And, you know, many people suffer from uh, heart attacks and, and there is this condition called atherosclerosis uh, that is um, essentially blocking of the blood vessels. And a lot of that is mediated by the uh, matrix that is lining these endothelial cells uh, that are, uh, you know, uh, lining the blood vessels. Um, so the matrix, because of the fact that it is uh, omnipresent, it's there everywhere, right? That means irrespective of where cells are, they are talking to the matrix, which means anything they have to do at that point of time or anything they have to change in their behavior at any point of time will be affected by how they talk to the matrix. So either it is a normal interaction and the matrix is telling them what to do and they are following it or it's an abnormal interaction where these cells have found a way to kind of bypass what the matrix will tell them and you know now do things that they would not normally do. Either way, the influence of the matrix is real. And so understanding how cells talk to the matrix, how that matrix influences cells uh, could go to the core of understanding normal behavior and also diseases that happen as a result of cells overcoming or bypassing this normal behavior. Can you please explain the experiments that you carry out in your lab to mm. understand matrix? Okay. So, so we do, there are many kinds of experiments we do. And uh, some of them are rather simple experiments. Uh, one of the experiments that we do is, as I said, we are interested in understanding what happens to a cell when it is adherent. And one way to know what happens when it is adherent is to ask what happens when you detach the cell. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you take this cell and take it out of the matrix and now the cell becomes suspended, right? what has changed in this cell? One more way to look at the suspended cells and the role of adhesion is you take adherent cells, you detach them, and then you keep them in suspension for some period of time, and then you reattach them. So you can watch the cell at, as it becomes adherent and, and now attaches and spreads and ask what has changed in the behavior of the cell as it becomes adherent. Right? Uh, we do experiments where we attach, detach, and reattach cells very regularly. And uh, these are, it's, it's interesting that these are seemingly simple experiments, right? Because uh, they could be done anywhere. Um, and you would think that an experiment like that uh, is, you know, may not tell you a lot. But uh, it's amazing how much information remains to be discovered in terms of what changes are happening 
we study um, cellular organelles, particularly in the context of adhesion. And a couple of years ago, we discovered how um, the Golgi of the cell, which is like a big packaging center inside the cell, is very nicely tightly packed. Um, and uh, the tight packaging of the Golgi uh, is something that we've known for many, many years. Uh, the moment you detach the cell, uh, this Golgi that is very tightly packed suddenly goes poof inside the cell and fills up the whole cell. Right? So the Golgi that is normally very compact is suddenly completely opened up. And if you take this cell and now replate it back on matrix, it goes and becomes compact again. Right? And I have been as a cell biologist doing experiments like this. You know, anytime you grow cells, you detach them before you replate them again. And we've been doing this for all these years. And every time we do this, the Golgi does this. Right? So an experiment, I mean, it was a, it was a very um, remarkable thing to see that um, nobody seems to have asked this question this way. And by just taking adherent cells, detaching them and replating them, we were able to discover something that is very fundamental in terms of how cells uh, behave. We obviously do more you know, complex imaging experiments as well. We do a lot of imaging in the lab. So we study proteins inside the cell uh, and we study them in context of where they are sitting in the cell. Uh, if you give a certain stimulus, where do they move? Uh, if you take a cell and detach it, now where is the protein in relationship to the cell. When we replate it and the cell slowly starts spreading, uh, does the localization change? Uh, and a lot of this can be asked by, you know, staining for these proteins inside the cell. Uh, we look at the cytoskeleton in this context. So we look at, you know, what happens to actin, what happens to microtubules, how are they organized, right? Um, all of this also means we can put inhibitors for many things yeah. right? and uh, stop one or more of these players and ask what happens as a result of that. Right? Uh, so we do experiments which use a lot of different inhibitors to target different molecules. Um, along with what we do um, you know, conventionally as adherent, uh, detached and re-adherent cells, a lot of those experiments are done uh, in tissue culture plastic dishes. So the cells stick, they grow well, you detach them and then you replate them on power slips. Right? But um, those uh, dishes are all flat two-dimensional surfaces. Um, and in physiology, there is no flat two-dimensional surface in our body. Right? Uh, everything is three-dimensional. So we also do studies where we take cells and put them in matrices which are three-dimensional. So now the cell is actually embedded in a matrix rather than being flat. It is now a three-dimensional ball. It makes very different kinds of protrusions. Right? It looks very different um, and it functions very differently as well. So it allows us to see how the behavior of the cell has changed in such a three-dimensional a lot of the imaging that we do on cover slips, we also do in 3D, which uh, requires certain additional modifications to the protocols. But it allows us to see now uh, live, image a live cell in three-dimensional matrix, look at how proteins are moving in them, what is the uh, you know organelle architecture like here, all those questions we can ask in 3D. Because we study adhesion, there is another interesting element to how adhesion works on cells, which is along with it being a matrix to which the cells stick to, uh, which means when they stick, there is like a biochemical stimulus that comes. The matrix also gives cells uh, biophysical stimuli, which means um, when a cell sticks to the matrix, it also understands how stiff the matrix is. And that stiffness in turn influences the reaction of the cell, influences the behavior of the cell. Which means that um, the matrix and the cellular interaction 
should be looked at not just in 2D versus 3D. Uh, it should also be looked at uh, in uh, the context of how cells work um, across different uh, stiffnesses. This means that um, we can, we have to have a method to do this. So we do these studies where uh, we make gels of uh, something called polyacrylamide. And, and this is a mixture that can be put together uh, and have and create gels of very defined stiffness. So it's, uh, you know, you can change the stiffness very gradually and make gels like this. And the gel can be coated with the matrix. And then you can plate cells on them, right? So now I am plating cells on a matrix which is sitting on a gel with a certain stiffness. So the cell responds to the matrix on top but is also responding to the stiffness of the gel. So we can change the stiffness and we can change, look at the behavior of the cell as the stiffness changes. We now have developed a method where uh, you know, we can also look at this uh, in 3D gels that others have done too, uh, where people have put cells in 3D gels of varying stiffness. Um, but we also wanted to create the same 3D kind of gel, uh, but on a two-dimensional matrix. Right? So this is a gel and the cell is put on top. Um, and in the same gel, uh, you can put a cell inside the gel in 3D. So here the cell is on the gel and there it is inside the gel. And the question is, a lot of experimental work is done by putting cells on the gel because it's easy to look at and image and all of that. But is the behavior of both of these similar is something that really has not been looked at. So we are also asking, can we compare this and see how this behavior is? Because we, I, you know, we talked about cancer, we also look at cancer cells and this ability to grow in an anchorage independent manner. Um, and that's also j done uh, by taking cells um, and putting them in like an agarose bed. Right? So you mix it with agarose, uh, the cells are now in the agarose and then you add medium on top and you grow the cells. The normal cells that cannot grow in an anchorage independent manner um, feel like they are suspended in the agarose. So they just stop growing. So normal cells will not grow if they are individual cells trapped in the agarose. Okay. But cancer cells, if they are individual cells that are trapped in the agarose, they will start dividing. And then they will make tiny colonies. Right? You grow these colonies for 7 days, 14 days. Uh, these colonies then can be stained for. And you can see whether the cells have made colonies or not. Now, this is a very useful assay for us because... Uh, it very quickly lets you define whether the anchorage independent phenotype of the cell, what is it like and has it been affected. So if we target a protein or if we knock something down um, or we add an inhibitor, um, can we now look at the anchorage independent growth and see whether that is affected by whatever treatment we have done. Um, so these are the adhesion related, uh, you know, experiments that we do. We um, interestingly have also adapted some of what we've learned uh, in studying adhesion to ask more kind of application, you know, driven queries. Uh, this is an interesting story that we, you know, a couple of years ago got approached by uh, Neil, who's a, a, a dentist here in Pune. Neil studied abroad and then came back and started a practice here and he has a very successful practice in Pune. And Neil wrote to us and said, um, you know, I was just looking at uh, the work that is happening in ICER and I saw your website and I'm just curious about what you guys do. Uh, is it possible for us to meet? So we said, sure. You know, so he came over and, you know, we spoke about what he does and, and he's worked with dental implants before and that's his area of expertise. And he's also been a researcher along with being a dentist. Um, and so we said we'll meet and talk. And we spoke a couple of times. Um, and, you know, we decided once a month we'll meet and see whether there is anything 
that is of interest that uh, you know can bring his expertise and our expertise together so we didn't directly arrive at a question we just met we met for lunch at times and and just spoke about the things uh, that we do he had questions i had questions um and then eventually we discovered that um the, the way dental implants are studied is that they take discs of implants and they put them in a petri dish and they grow cells on it and they ask whether cells stick to them or not uh we on the contrary know and everybody else also knows that uh, cells on 2d dishes are very different from cells in 3d so if you are looking at uh, the behavior of cells in an implant uh the implant is in a three dimensional space it will be really nice to see the behavior of cells in a three dimensional environment right so so neil pulled out some old uh, implant discs that he had um and you know we put them in 3d gels with cells and we looked at the behavior of cells as they come towards the implant how do they stick you know we are in a position to look at the organization of the gel we can look at the cells themselves all of this was great because it let us see the behavior of cells with the implant um, in a three dimensional uh, you know space in a way that had not been done before so this now you know we've carried forward and we are doing additional studies we have we wrote to a couple of dental implant companies who funded the work and now we have implants from them that we are testing out um and neil is still a collaborator to end up years down the line uh and and you know this is something that we hadn't done before and and we now uh have learned um, and are doing experiments with implants in a way that uh, you know we've not done before so this was a cool thing for us we similarly have collaborations with chemistry here in iser because because as i said cancer cells grow anchorage independently normal cells grow anchorage dependently the way to uh, you know one of the things we want to aspire for is to see if you can make these cells anchorage dependent and and as long as we start discovering pathways that drive anchorage dependence here we thought it will be nice to find out if those pathways are different here mm. and if those pathways are different here can we target that pathway and bring this back here so among that in that rationale we identified uh, proteins that actually could be targeted this way um, and then we discovered that these proteins actually have inhibitors also that could be given but the problem with inhibitors was that they are uh, these inhibitors are poorly soluble so it becomes very difficult to deliver them so about 5 years ago we you know went and spoke to this lab in chemistry uh, dr jaykanan's lab and they work with uh, drug delivery systems and they were at that point just beginning to explore the idea of using nano vesicles to deliver drugs and we said we have a candidate will you be interested in trying this out and he said sure so so for the last 6 years we've been collaborating with them uh we developed um a nano vesicle carrier system uh, that allows uh this particular drug uh, to be delivered to target uh you know this kinase called aurora kinase um all the assays that i told you we actually use with the inhibitor so instead of an inhibitor we are now giving the nano vesicle right with the inhibitor in it uh we then adapted this nano vesicle and they made nano particles which were differently designed uh to uh, see if the drug can be delivered better more of the drug can be loaded um we developed simple tools with them because these are hollow nano vesicles you know we said you know we would like to see where this goes inside the cell so can you put something inside that is fluorescent right where the drug is in the memory mm-hmm. and there is a fluorescent dye inside i said sure we can make this so we said okay so they made one and then now we have the drug in the nano vesicle with a fluorescent dye now you put it on cells you can watch their uptake you can do watch their uptake across cancer cell types and see which cancers are taking it up and how yeah. right so so these are all you know assays uh, that we now use and um, though we began with some basic uh, you know understanding of how we want to approach this we've now evolved to incorporate many of the interesting things that we do in the kind of experiments you know that we are doing so going forward chances are 
you know five years or two years down the line we'll be doing a uh, you know new set of assays that we weren't doing and that's part of the fun of doing this right so you get to try new things perfect that's all question i had thank okay. you very much for your time okay no problem